All right, in this video, we're just gonna give you an introduction to what marketing is, and we're gonna talk about some of the different values. But before we get there, I wanna tell you a quick story from my own personal life about how marketing is around us every single day. And most of us are completely unaware of it. We actually sort of think that things happen more often on accident than they do. In reality, most of it's pretty planned out before we go there. And so I'm just gonna share with you a fun story that happened in my own life and this was a few years ago when my daughter was in second grade. We were shopping at the grocery store and you know, she was in this phase of her life where she thought that you know, she doesn't wanna to be told what to do. She's old enough, right? She can do whatever she wants to do. You cannot tell her what to do. She's gonna decide. So instead of me saying like, hey, can you get this product? Can you get that product? She's saying, no, I'm gonna pick my own products. So first of all, I want you to take a second step back and think about how many products do you think are in a typical grocery store? 5,000, 10,000 different products? There's more than you can count. There are way too many products. So I'm like, fine, whatever. Walk around, pick your products. So she comes to me with the very first product that we're in. In the first aisle we're walking down, she comes to me and here's the product that she gives me. It's this can of soup. Now remember, my daughter's probably in second grade at this time. Do you think she can actually read what's on here? Of course she can read. Do you think she knows what Campbell's condensed soup even means? She has no idea. Do you think she even cares? Do you think she read what's on there? None of the above. She chose this because of the picture on the thing. It's this bright pink fuchsia color with a beautiful fun Disney princess on the label. That's what she picked. Now I want you to think out of those five or 10,000 products at the grocery store, this is the product she picked. There's no accident that she picked this. The reason she picked this is because look at the height of that can. It's not at your eyes, it's not at my eyes, it's not at anyone's eyes who's actually buying soup at the grocery store. But what it is, it's at the eyes of a girl who's in second grade. It's at her eye level. That is done on purpose. And if you look right next to it, you can actually see that there's ones for boys that have, they're greener cans, I believe they are, and they have the, you know, that the boy type products, cars is what's on there, right? So the idea that marketers are very aware that kids are walking up and down aisles. They're very aware that at this moment, these kids are, are you know, telling their parents, hey, I want to pick what I want to pick. You can't tell me what to pick. And they're going to pick this. It's not at your level. It's not on my level because it doesn't attract to us, right? The ones that are our levels are the greens and the reds. But at the kids' levels, it's the cartoon characters. Now, here's the second thing about market that's interesting. How much does a can of soup cost? I don't know, a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars, whatever it is. But as a parent, I have a choice. I could buy this soup for two bucks and make my daughter happy, or I can say no, and now she's gonna throw a massive fit, she's gonna have a tantrum, and I gotta deal with this from the rest of, maybe even the rest of the time we're grocery shopping. All of this to save two dollars. So what would you do? I'll tell you what I did. I bought them. I bought it. It's still sitting at home. No one's ever eaten it. We don't eat Campbell's soup in our house. We try to be a pretty healthy family. But you know what? I bought that stupid can of soup because it was directed towards my daughter and it was perfectly laid out at the perfect time in the perfect place. So this is just an example for kids, but it happens to all of us all the time. Marketers know a lot, if not everything about us, and they're always kind of lurking there. And so we're gonna get into that, not just in this video, but in all the videos that you're gonna watch throughout the semester. So here's what we're gonna to do today. Today's objective, you will be able to explain the purpose of marketing in our daily lives. So the first thing I wanna do is, I wanna just get some really basic vocab out of the way. And the reason I wanna to touch on this vocab is because marketing is one of these weird things that the word marketing is used very interchangeably with multiple other words in the marketing sort of like field. So I'm just gonna read these words and some very basic examples. We're not gonna go into very much detail. We're gonna spend a lot of the semester actually talking about these later, but I just wanna just get this out of the way in the beginning because I feel like sometimes, you know, in marketing, there's a little bit of confusion because people often say, well, I'm gonna go do my marketing or well, what are you doing? I'm doing marketing and they're actually talking about different things. So the first one's advertising. So I'm just gonna actually read these to you. Advertising. A sign says, circus is coming to town on Saturday is advertising. The second one, 
If you put this sign on the back of an elephant and walk into town, that's a promotion. The third one, if the elephant sits on the car of the mayor and the local paper writes a story, that's publicity. If you get the mayor to laugh about it, that's public relations. People buy tickets to the circus, that's sales. You plan the whole thing, that's marketing. So in this class, we're gonna talk about marketing. But like I said, a lot of times people use all of these different words I just gave to you interchangeably with the word marketing. But in reality, the word marketing is actually something different than all of these other words. So what is marketing? Marketing is a strategy. It's the thing that actually controls all of these other words. All of these other words are underneath this word marketing, right? Marketing is the strategy. It's the plan. It's the master plan. It's understanding what consumers desire and to create value to fulfill those needs. So what marketing is understanding your customers. It's doing very in-depth market research so you understand as much as you possibly can about your customer. And you're not doing all this research to understand your customer to exploit them. You're doing all of this research so that you can produce products that will solve the problems they have. But what is marketing? Marketing is the strategy of digging up this research, understanding who your customers are, and then putting forth all the things which we often say are the four Ps. Marketing is what drives the bus. It's what moves everything along. So once you have all of your research done, your strategy is how you're gonna get sales, how are you gonna connect with your customers, and how are they gonna actually buy the products? It's basically, it's like everything that's under the umbrella. That's one of the, so I think of it as like you're driving the bus or it's everything underneath this umbrella of marketing. All of these different vocabs, whether it's sales, public relations, advertising, it all fits under marketing. So why do we need marketing? What's the point of it? I know a lot of you are probably watching this video thinking, marketing is dumb. I don't need marketing. I, you know, I, I'm in finance or I'm in engineering or I'm in R and D or I'm in production or I'm in supply chain or I'm in accounting. Marketing is doesn't do anything. So what does it do? Marketing creates value. So what is value? You are, marketing is a solution. Value is a solution. You are selling a solution to people's problems. So your job is to understand what is the problem that your customers are trying to solve and you're giving them a solution to that problem. That's what you're doing. You're selling a solution. You have to understand what's bothering your customers. What are their wants and needs and fears? And then you solve that problem that they have. So think about it. Why do you buy water? Why did you buy that car? Why do you shop at Zara? The very basics is I'm thirsty. I need water. But we all know when you go to the, whether you go to the grocery store or the gas station, there are a hundred different drinks in there. So which one do you pick? There's so much more to it than the basic raw of I'm thirsty. I'm going to buy water. And we're going to get into these different types of things that matter to people and what types of things that they buy and what problem are they solving. And later in other videos, we're going to actually get much deeper into th things like cars. Why do you buy cars? Of course, I want to get from A to B, but if, there was, if that was that simple, we would all buy the exact same car. We don't. If it was simple as just clothes, we would all shop just at Walmart or Amazon and buy all of our stuff for the cheapest every single time, but we don't. And think about brands like Zara, H&M. How do these brands exist, these fast, fast fashion brands? They solve a lot more problem than just, I'm cold, I need clothes to wear. They make you look good. They make you feel good. They make you proud of who you are or whatever the, the, whatever the reasons are. But you're solving much bigger problems than just, I'm cold, I need clothes to wear. I'm going swimming. I'm going to work. There's a lot more that goes into it. And as a marketer, it's your job to understand what are these different things that go into this decision-making process. There are four types of value. So as a marketer, you want to think about, okay, there are four types of value. Which one are we going to focus on? Which one does our customer care about? And a lot goes into this thought process. 
Again, you think about what does your customer care about? What are, or what are our competitors focusing on? How can we be the same as them? How can we be different? But in this section here, I just want to tell you what are the four types of value that you can offer your customers to solve their problems. The first one's economic value. The example that I use is an LED light bulb. It's tangible monetary savings either at the time of purchase or over its long-term use. To me, I think about it, it's like a bang for your buck, right? An LED light bulb costs a lot more money than a traditional light bulb up front. But a lot of times when you buy them, you'll get an eight, nine, 10 year warranty. If you've ever seen videos on YouTube of when they compare, someone will be like spinning the box and they show like how hard they're spinning to spin a traditional light bulb, meaning like how much electricity it requires compared to an LED light bulb. And they spin the box, they like spin it barely like this and the bulb will actually light up. And so yeah, you're spending more money to get this LED light bulb, but you have a 10 year warranty and the amount of electricity it's using is way, way less than a traditional light bulb. So that's called economic value. The actual purchase price is more expensive, but the bang for your buck, what you're getting from it is way higher. So economic value is focusing on that. The next one is functional value. This means like it really solves the problem. It's features that it offers, the benefits that it offers are great. To me, I think about computers, smartphones. Think about a smartphone. What percentage of a smartphone do you think you actually use? 5%, 10%, 15%? The power that a smartphone has and the capabilities that it has are mind boggling. But most of us use it for what? Texting, checking the news, checking the weather, sports, social media, taking pictures. That's it. Very basic, very simple. We barely even touch the actual functional value that it has, how far it can actually go. Think about it. If you go on a business trip, you technically don't need anything but your phone because you really could do everything on it, right? And so that's what functional value is. It really solves that problem. The functions, the features, the benefits are excellent. You're paying for that. The next one is experiential value. Experiential value to me is like brand value. It's Apple, it's Nike. It's a sort of intangible psychological and emotional value. So for me, I think a good example is people waiting in line to buy the Apple phone or to buy an iPhone. Right? You will pay extra money just for that logo. For me personally, Nike, the only tennis shoes I wear are Nikes. I am a huge super fan of the 1990 Air Maxes. I love those shoes. I always joke that when I get rich, I'm going to have a massive closet full of nothing but 1990 Nike Air Maxes. I want every color and design ever made. And I'll pay for them. Why? Because I want that brand name. Are Nike shoes the best shoes out there? I don't know. But it doesn't matter. I care about that logo. I care about that name. So I will pay more money for those just because of that. That's experiential value. So don't re forget that that's a huge one that a lot of us get sucked into. We think we're buying it because it's a better this, it's better that. But in reality, you're paying for that logo. The last one is social value. This is one that's really exploded since the internet took off. Social value, the idea is, is that it's connecting with other people. Imagine if you're on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, and you're the only one on there. Nobody else was on there but yourself. It wouldn't exist. It would disappear. Even things like Yelp, TripAdvisor, even YouTube for that matter, the only reason they really exist is because lots of people are on there. They're great ways to connect with other people. Snapchat by itself is a useless tool, but if you have it and you can message with all your friends, now it's a great tool. It provides social value. So the question then becomes this, you can research your customers. You can understand what they care about. You can understand their wants, needs, and fears. You produce the right product that they care about. You understand the values that they care about, but how do you deliver that to them? How do you tell them, Hey, I'm over here. 
right here, look at me, look at me. I have the problem that's going to, I have the solution that's going to solve your problem. How do you tell them that? That is probably the most difficult part in all of marketing. You need to communicate to them. Communications. You need to tell them that, hey, I have a pro I have a solution for your problem. Communication is key. So once you do all the first steps, now you have to figure out how do I deliver this value? It's communication. But imagine this, and this is where marketing plays a big part. Imagine if you went grocery shopping or anything for that matter, and nothing had logos, nothing had labels, everything was just white. Think about you walk into your favorite supermarket and you go shopping and you go to the bread aisle. The bread aisle is my favorite because there's like a thousand kinds of bread. Every single package of bread is just in a clear bag, not a single word on it. Imagine you go to the, you know, the, the salad dressing aisle, the soup aisle or whatever the aisle, cereal aisle, and every single box is just white. No words, it just says cereal. How do you pick them? How do you choose from type A to type B to type C? You couldn't. Which one's good? Which one's bad? You don't know. Marketing tells us for it. Tells us this. Marketing is communicating, hey, this one's sweeter. This one has higher protein. This one has, you know, vitamin A in it. This one has vitamin C in it. This one has these shapes. This one has those shapes. This one is fun. That one is for adults. This one's for kids. This one is multigrain. This one has whole grain, whatever it is. But we know this because of the labels on the packaging. Imagine cars. If every car was just black or every car was just white and they were all exactly the same, we would have the same situation. You wouldn't know what to choose from. But now the question comes to this. How do you know what to tell your customers? Because most products have multiple benefits to them. So you need to understand your customers so that you focus on that one single topic that they care about. What is that one value that they really, really care about? So again, you do quality market research, you understand who your customers are, you understand their wants, needs, and their fears, and now you can produce the perfect communication that's gonna connect with them. So I wanna show you an example of, to me, a great industry that does this probably as well as anybody, the car industry. In today's world, with all the rules and the regulations we have, the massive amounts of online feedback that we provide car companies, basically every car is pretty much the same. The idea that there's a lemon is not really existent like it used to be. You know, when, when I was a kid, people used to say, oh, don't buy those cars, that's, they're poor quality, or they're, that's a lemon, that car's gonna break down. You don't hear that anymore. All the cars, for the most part, are pretty much the same in the sense of that they're made very, very well, and they solve a lot of problems. And car companies know this, but they also know that there are multiple groups of people and each person cares about a specific thing. They're looking to solve one problem. So the first one, Volvo, win big with safety. All their energy, they're communicating, hey, we have the safest car out here, come buy our car. The next one, Mustang, power, speed, energy, muscles. Hybrid, we're green. Tesla, we're super green. We don't even need gas. Camry, all wheel drive. And the last one is a truck, rugged outdoor. But I want to take a second and go back through these. And I want to talk about what I mean by how each one could say different things, but they don't. They choose not to. So the big with safety, it's a Volvo. Obviously, they could drive outside. It gets good gas mileage. It's all wheel drive. It does the same thing that most of the other cars we talked about do, but they focus on being big with safety. Safety is what their thing is. So they're saying, hey, if you have a family, you should buy this car. Mustang, Mustangs are nice cars. They probably get decent gas mileage, but hey, they're saying, you know what? If you want a car that's powerful, you buy this car. The hybrid, again, it's an SUV. It gets great gas mileage. It's, Toyotas aren't safe cars. Of course it's a safe car. Tesla, right? It's a green car. They focus on being green, but it does definitely does other things. They, they could talk about all the amazing technology they have in there, but they don't. They talk about it's green. All-wheel drive. Again, this is a car. It gets better gas mileage than the hybrid SUV gets, 
But they don't need to talk about that. But why they talk about what their customers care about is all wheel drive. And a truck, there probably is not a safer car on the road than driving a huge truck. I mean, I think about this all the time as a parent. Should I just buy a huge truck? Because the odds are that something's going to happen to us if we get in an accident are probably pretty small if I'm driving a truck like that. So in summary, you should be able to explain the purpose of marketing our daily lives. So through what we talked about in this video, it all kind of comes back to marketing is around us all the time. And next time when you go to the supermarket, I want you to start thinking about what am I seeing? Where are things sitting? Why are they sitting there? What values are these products giving to us? Did I buy this because I need to buy this? Why did I buy this? What was the purpose of this? What problem is it solving? All right. Thanks everyone for your time. Have a great day. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.